FOA is a global membership organization dedicated to families and single family offices. We provide research, thought leadership, and host large forums around the world for our member families. It's a lot of brilliant minds coming together, obviously with a financial and investment uh, background. And so it's also always very interesting to look at some of the entrepreneurial ideas that are here. I think that FOA does a great job of getting top thinkers, visionary, and highly respected industry professionals at their conferences. I started off as a dairy farmer's son on a farm in Ireland. By 13, I started getting a little curious. So I uh, managed to download the blueprints of Spaceship Columbia from one of NASA's machines, which got me a visit from them. And by 16, the Bank of England had asked me to test SWIFT, which is what you all use for bank wires and transfers. I was able to add zeros and redirect where it arrived. This is how I visualized it, what I call my ambiguity triangle. In the middle is a whole bunch of fuzzy ideas, hypotheses, concepts you came up with that you didn't have time to flesh out or look into. You don't know what they cost and you don't know if they're feasible. So they drop to the bottom of your to-do list for years. We take this middle layer off your hands and we call it concierge up. It opens the Scorpion think tank to the general public. And you provide the market incentives to a carbon tax to transform gradually away from a hydrocarbon-based economy to deal with climate change. But it's a grand trade-off between energy and the environmentalists. And it's a trade-off that we have to take as America. That's really important process. That discovery process is fundamental to invention. It is fundamental to innovation. That process has to happen or you don't get any new technologies. Solar magnetic storms are potentially a huge problem for our whole infrastructure because they have devastating effects on directly on electronics, like the computer in your car, and uh, also, particularly, uh, on transformers and transmission lines, which are the heart of our electrical grid. The story of Rachel Beckwith. Rachel saw me speak. Uh, her church in Seattle had raised a bunch of money, very young group of people, and I had asked everyone at the end to consider giving up her birthday, so she gives up her ninth, and she set a goal of raising $300 and raised only 220. She was super bummed. She told her mom, I'm gonna try harder next year. I was in the Central African Republic at the time. I had landed in New York and got a text from her pastor saying, Rachel's just been killed. And they said the family would like to open up her fundraising campaign and honor her last wish, which was for kids that she'd never met to have clean water instead of gifts or a party. She wound up raising over $1.2 million from over 60,000 people. Behind the scenes to know that we took people that are putting millions of dollars of philanthropic capital into executing on projects and other people that are putting millions of dollars of investment, investment capital into development, that they're now all in the same pool. Um, so to, to leverage the ideas from our presenters with that type of vibe, with that type of, um, that type of community that feels like they're activated is a very powerful thing.